Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. We just got the new uh, gear in for the One How Extruder. So a lot of folks were asking how big it is, so uh, let's measure it. So on the micrometer it's reading 11 point, roughly 11 point, uh, well actually right there it's about 11. So I'm going to say I'm going to say 11 millimeters, and then the gear width itself. Make sure I get it on the pads. 11.55 um, millimeters is the size. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this bad boy apart, and we're going to change out the gear in it. So let's go. So I wanted to drop out of the time lapse ble briefly to show you two things. So this screw doesn't come all the way out, this one here, and then there's a screw hidden behind here. So there's just the two screws holding this plastic um, piece on. So again, just kind of wanted to show you that. And then what I'm going to do now, I wanted to also show, man, look at how much this, um, whoops, if I get it in frame here look at how much that that crap filament wow this gear is all gummed up with that filament I didn't uh, notice that uh, I gotta keep it in the frame here uh, wow I'm, I'm shocked no wonder I've uh, I've been having a little bit of layer issue um, since printing that but that stuff is just crap look at that how much it's chewed into that gear so, uh, anyways, one of the, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this gear with a Sharpie just to make sure I re-index it correctly. So, I'm going to go back to the time lapse now. Now, I wanted to, again, drop out of the time lapse. These, these lock screws were hardly tight at all. It was actually loose on this shaft. So, there isn't much that it can move because it's sort of indexed to the shaft or via the, the set screws, but they were loose. So um, I think this could be the cause of some of my stringiness because there is a lot of play in the uh, gear itself. So this might be something worthwhile to take apart and check um, if you're having some issues. Because like I say, there's ba basically that much looseness in this thing. I'm, I, again, I'm surprised. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, find my thing. So now also the shaft is the shaft is indexed with this flat spot. So again that's where I'm going to place my gear. And then what I'm also going to do well what I'm going to do is push push it this way. because uh, I want to see something. Okay, so the roller so if I want to get it in the frame so you see where the roller comes into contact with the gear, so I want to put the locking head back this way. Now, I want it a little bit off the, um, the motor, so you can see where I've got my indexing mark and where the gear comes to, and I'm going to push it out just a little bit so it doesn't hit. And then tighten this down. Now, this one, this one only appears to have one. So I'm going to make sure. And this is small Allen wrench, so I want to make sure I get it good and tight. So now that's on there, good and tight. Now I'm going to make sure you get your motor connector up and put this back on as such. Whoops, here it is. We need this monster wrench to put this back together. Remember, we got to push this down. 
Now that's probably... So, note to self, do this screw first because you're going to have to pull it up. So do this one first. And if I get my fingers in there, it's kind of hard. So this one behind the lever first. That's tightened on there. Then this one. And then that's reassembled. Now, because I broke the filament off in here, I'm going to have to heat this up and push that through before I do anything else. So I'm going to go do that and then uh, come back and we'll remount this. Okay, so we're back. So uh, one of the other things, everybody wanted to know a comparison to how big the gears are. So let's provide that. So I'd have to say the gears are the same size. This is 1099, and I bet you if I move it around, I get 11. So uh, so there, I got 11. So, so in short, the gears... The same di you know same diameter for practical purposes, and then um, let's measure it. It's about about the same size and, and width too. And I noticed that from my index point that I uh, put it on there. So now the big question is how does it print? However, I still want to go back to uh, since I have this out. I don't know if you can see that, but this gear is just packed with that Sane Smart wood filament. I I can't. I can't recommend that stuff. Um, that's just been crazy. Um, the other thing, I have been soaking it in water. So I've had a couple questions from some viewers about is it waterproof? And I would say yes it is. I've been soaking this all day in water. I broke up this one piece and stuck it in there. You know, regular tap water and it hasn't done anything so it's, it's just like regular plastic so if you want to use this for that I, I you can kind of see the water just wick off so this stuff is definitely doesn't appear to be water sensitive which really surprises me because I thought it said you could stain it but how can you stain it if it doesn't adhere so anyways so let's go ahead and um, print something and see how it works <laughs> Okay, we're back. So we've got uh, the rocket printed out and uh, came out okay. I'm not um, jumping up and down for joy, but I think more so might be a combination of the slicer and, and material more so than anything else. Because it comes out pretty much perfect up to about here, and then it kind of gets to a funny color as it winds down to the tip. And when I compare it with the original one from the, the Wan Hao, you can see the tip from the original is, is far nicer than the tip here. Might be because I ran it a little bit warmer. Ran this one at 205, and I don't think I probably ran this one that hot, but I can't remember for, sur for sure. So I may go back and, and try this, this, this one over again. Some other Another interesting piece, if I don't bump the camera, is... Um, this piece right here, I'm not sure you can see it, how the line is staggered um, with the layer starting at different places. So I, I believe this is the setting inside the uh, uh, slicer, inside of Cura, <clears throat> so it doesn't line it up, you know, all with one big seam. So uh, kind of interesting. You don't, don't really notice that in a colored filament like you do a clear. Uh, in general, I've, I've printed quite a bit of stuff since making this rocket with the... Uh, uh, clear PLA. 
So pretty happy with it, and uh, you'll see some videos coming out on that, so I uh, kind of like the look of it quite a bit. I do want to jump back, though, in closing with the with the gear. So uh, again, if you, even if you don't switch the gear, uh, open it up, check it out, because one of the things, and this should have been a big red flag to me, is I had to go up to 4 millimeters for retraction, um, you know, to, to, to reduce the stringing, that didn't even, that reduced it, but it didn't stop it because there's so much slop in this gear being loose. So the one um, set screw was catching, you know, the, the flat spot on the shaft and going up and down. And then obviously when it was turning, you know, it would catch that part in turn until it hit the retraction. Um, so, I mean, make sure that this is, is snugly tightened on, on your extruder shaft, especially if you're having stringing problems or it's requiring a lot of um, uh, retraction. So. Since since changing it, I'm down to one mill one millimeter of retraction. So and that's that's working fine, and I'm not getting any stringing. So I, I'm really happy with the way the gear is working in general. I've um, printed quite a few things since then, and, and it's worked very well. So you know, again, my suggestion: check this gear out. So, anyways, hope you found this whole video interesting. I know a lot of you've been asking about the gear change and things like that. So hopefully, this has answered your questions. If it did, hey, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, a lot more coming soon. Thank you. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.